and we are going into round two very shortly. But just a quick recap on round mm -hmm. one, if just in case you missed it, <laughs> it was versus Matt Maynard and Thomas Carvui of France. And Matt was able to come out with a 2-0 win with an amazing Goldengo. I mean, Golden Goal has been the Pokemon I think that everyone's been talking about since Series 1, right? You know, one of the new Pokemon that came out in Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet, and it's just been so disruptive with that Make It Rain. If you haven't got a way to stop it, particularly as it's a spread move, it's going to do a significant chunk of damage to your Pokemon. And no wonder it's really coming back. After Series 1, it was everywhere. Mm -hmm. Then everyone was kind of toying with the Paradox Pokemon and then going, wait, right, hang on, actually. Um, let's go back to the Steel and Ghost type, which is such a really strong <laughs> type. And combined with that weakness policy that mm -hmm. we saw in the Round 1, it was able to take those hits really well thanks to the bulk, that friend guard from Mousehold, and then just sweep mm -hmm. from Tomas' team. I think the weakness policy is wild because I was very much a choice scarf kind of player with Golden Go and just, you know, I know it would go down at the end, but let's make it speedy, do some damage. But then we've got players, like you say, making it a little bit bulkier, uti utilizing synergy with like friend guard and things like that so that it can survive an attack and get that weakness policy proc, I think is amazing. So it's nice to see kind of the evolution of that Pokemon in terms of the move pools and the way our trainers are kind of piloting it. But we are only just beginning mm -hmm. our journey on Bochum Regional. So that was just round one. And we've got a whole new rounds to go. I think we're nine rounds mm -hmm. today. And then we've got a day two of Swiss as well. Yes, and as you saw on the little graphic that popped up on, on this side, <laughs> it's over it's over by your head, um, we actually have an exciting round two match for you. It's going to be Enos Shahar versus Alex Gomez. So really nice to see a player come over from the US as well and try and battle it out against our Europeans. And here they are on the screen as well. And these two players are no strangers to VGC either. They've got quite a few accolades for mm -hmm. both of them too. Alex Gomez on the right here, which in case you don't know, he <laughs> got top eight at Worlds in 2019, which is incredible. Like top 16, 2019 EUIC mm -hmm. and many other like top eight top 32s throughout the years i think the key thing about both of these players is they've been playing for a very long time you know enosh as well has leveled up from seniors back in 2011 actually got top eight the u.s nationals in seniors division and since then has just gone strength to strength you know get top eight at worlds in 2013 a few accolades popping up here as well and then more recently has been able to get second place finishes at like san jose regionals in 2016 and top eight at the brampton regionals in 2019 so i'm looking forward to seeing both these titans of vgc carve their mark in 2023 and Alex actually attended Liverpool Regional, so which, mm -hmm. which I think was his last one that he attended. And he came top 32, so that's enough to get some CP, mm -hmm. but it's not a top cut yet. So I bet he's really keen to be able to try and push that boat a little bit further out here mm -hmm. in the Series 2 format. I'm going to call Alex out here a little bit as well, because Alex is the player who often says, I'm going to retire. And I remember at the World Championships in August, I was chatting with him, and he said, no, Lou, this is it. I'm, I'm done after the season. I'm going to focus on other things. And now he's back in the action. And I told him there that he wouldn't be able to resist after we got the new video game format with Scarlet and Violet. But let's dive a little deeper into these teams. Yeah, so on your screen now, we have Enosh's team. Mm -hmm. And there is a Torkoal with a Palafin, which is just, just comes out straight <laughs> away with me because normally you've got Pelipper Palafin, but this time you've got the Sun option too, which I really like because we've also got all these Paradox Pokemon, a lot of which have Protosynthesis, which mm -hmm. gets activated by the Sun. Fantastic observation, and that's where the synergy with particularly these Pokemon like Roaring Moon and Fluttermane that have that ability are going to be able to benefit from it. And I think that's a really nice kind of synergenic core that's coming out here from Enosh. I worry about the Palafin a little bit. You know, it likes to be in the rain, not the sun. It's going to have its water type moves reduced by 50% when the sun is in the sky. But if you can then make sure the ball positioning is correct, that you're not going to necessarily have the two out on the field at the same time, then that can give you such an advantage. And here we have Alex's team, who's also running that Palafin. <laughs> no Torkoal, though, this time, so not too much of a mirror, but he's also running a Dragonite, interestingly. It's a little bit different to Enosh's one, but it's running that Life Orb. Uh, so mm -hmm. very offensive, in a focus, so it can't get hit by those Intimidates with that flying Terra Terra Blast that we're seeing a lot of recently. What's happened to Pelipper? There are no Pelipers in this Palafin mirror. I know, obviously, Palafin was one of the Pokemon that just won the recent Oceania International Championships piloted by Gavin Michaels. But I see people picking it up, but poor Pelipper's not getting any love now. Maybe it's <laughs> that Palafin is just so successful. They've <laughs> been finding that like it just doesn't need that rain boost that it, it keeps mm. happening. And it's, it's one of those really nice options that people are actually using as a Dondozo answer as well, yes. because they all seem to be running Haze now. And that just seems to be enough to just kind of throw in Haze because you can, you've got the bulk to take the hits, and then you're good to go. I mean, it does go through that zero to hero transformation as well when it jumps out of the field and comes back. So maybe it doesn't need a sidekick at this point in time.
No, exactly. And so far, round one, round two, <laughs> no Don Dozer yet either. So no. people want to play with this new stuff going on. So looking more in depth mm -hmm. at these and in terms of the matchup and actually how they're going to verse each other, mm -hmm. um, obviously Enosh has that Torkoal option. And I'm wondering whether he, he kind of wants to bring that here because um, where Alex does have his Palafin, mm -hmm. um, which is going to help reduce the damage from that, it can help out his Glamora, set up that mm -hmm. toxic debris. And that's something that you might be wanting into something like Arcanine, which is able to sit on the field for so long, with thanks to its Citrus Berry, mm -hmm. its Snarl, and will o -Wisp. Yes, exactly. And you can also then, you know, poison Pokemon like the Mousehold and the Palafin as well, and just kind of put them on that timer and start chipping away with that residual damage. I mean, one thing that's nice as well about the Torkoal is um, there are no Pokemon in Alex's side that are going to benefit from their ability being activated, but Arcanine's one you have to watch out for. But here we go, round two is in action. That Torkoal is out on the field, paired up with the Flutter Main that's going to benefit from the Sun being in its sky. There we see the Protosynthesis has activated and its special attack will be boosted and it has to face down against Golden Go and Dragonite. Yeah, and that's looking pretty scary going into now, <laughs> having that special attack. So you, it's like you've got that choice specs boost right now, yes. except mm -hmm. it's instant and you can still switch up your moves. So it's not like Alex can go for like a defensive play to kind of get Fluttermane locked into something. Um, Enos is just going to be able to just dish out as much damage as he can straight off the bat with no obvious way of controlling the speed instantly. So with like a Pranks of Tailwind mm -hmm. from, say, a Murkrow, which is a pretty good Pokemon, by the way. Yeah, the Golden Go's got to really worry about the opposing Torkoal. And Fluttermane, too, you know, if it wants to go for something like a Shadow Ball, that's really going to hurt going into Golden Go, and that's where potentially we could see some of these Terra types coming into play. But instead, we're going to see a switch. Dragonite getting in on out of here. Which makes a lot of sense. It's probably going to hurt a lot from that Moonmask because mm -hmm. it is not that multi-scale that we often see. But Arcanine, the all reliable switch in at the moment in Series <laughs> 2. It sets up that MTM Nate, na goes natural bulk, is able to reduce the damage with its further attacks. We've got a Protect from Goldengo, and let's mm -hmm. see what e Enosh goes for. Yeah, I think quite wise going for that Protect. It's going to be the Dazzling Gleam coming up from the Flutter Main, just trying to get a little bit of spread damage against both of the opposing Pokemon. Arcanine being a good switch in here, but that still does a significant chunk of damage. About a third has gone as Torkoal followed up with that Flamethrower. So a nice defensive ball position switch here from Alex, bringing in the Arcanine that's going to be able to take those fire moves much better. And looking in the back as well, we can see Enos is kind of considering the switch here at the moment. Mm. Um, Goldengo is looking um, pretty good with its good, nice little health there. And there's, looking at this Torkoal, it's probably more defensive here. So um, Alex is probably quite comfortable that he'll probably be able to live a flamethrower uh, based on Torkoal's base special attack. It's not an mm -hmm. eruption, that sort of thing. And, and based on special defense, it's probably going to take a lot of damage. However, looking at the Goldengo itself, it's actually that Terra Water, so it's still in mm. a really decent position to be to even not take that much damage from the fire move itself. So on um, Enoshi's end, he can obviously go for the Yawn, more so into the, like the Arcanine, but that good as gold is making it sit really safe here, so I would not be surprised to see maybe a Terrestrialization coming in this turn. You're right, I mean, I think you know, Eno is really on the offensive here, has the control of the battlefield. But first of all, the Arcanine is going to move, go for the Snarl, is going to reduce the special attack of both special attackers that are now on the field in turn of Glamora and Torkoal. And of course, the Golden Go can follow up with a Shadow Ball that was going down into what was the Flutter Main, but Glamora able to take this in a much better way. Torkoal, however, in the sun is going to be able to fire off that Flamethrower, but you can see Golden Go mm. hanging on. It does get the burn, but as a special attacker, it's not going to worry too much about that. The issue is that residual damage. It is, and it's going to heal up a little bit now. So it, for, for what was going to be residual healing is now mm -hmm. just kind of sitting where it, it used to be at the moment. And Torkoal also has that leftover. So it's, it's, it's running that bulky kind of variant, which is really cool, because I think in Series 1, we often saw it on Trick Room teams, set up, and then you go for those eruptions. But mm -hmm. here it's that more that defensive play that we often actually saw last year a little bit more with that yawn and mm -hmm. slowing the pace of the game down and supporting the team with its sun, boosting up the protosynthesis of the, the Roaring Moon and the Fluttermane that we have seen here. Exactly, and Fluttermane has given up that boost now, you know, switching out into the back. A Pokemon of key interest, however, is that Glamora. We've often seen it running something like a Focus Ash or more commonly the uh, Choice Specs. But this one on Enosha's team is actually running the Assault Vest. So it's going to be able to take these special attacks from Pokemon one like the Golden Go much better. Now, Alex obviously has a lot of offense now, mm -hmm. thanks to his Golden Go like sitting there pretty nicely. And with the terrestrialization ability, it's probably going to be able to take on something that Glamora can go for. Obviously, mm -hmm. it depends on what Enosh wants to hit with this turn, because an Earth Power will KO it, but terrestrialization will keep it safe. So both players still keeping on to the terrestrialization, though. <laughs> yes, we haven't seen a Terra yet in this match. 
Golden Go, however, is going to be the first KO for Enoshir. It's going to be able to get the knockout thanks to the Torkoal. Um, and now, you know, you're now sitting in that nice position where you've got an advantage. Torkoal going for the Yawn into the protect of the opposing Arcanine. And I like that protect on Alex's side. Both Pokemon on Enoshir's side apply a lot of pressure. You've got things like the Power Gem or the Earth Power coming out from the Glamora. And then, of course, Torkoal. This one's actually not running something um, that's going to be able to deal too much into that opposing Arcanine, but the Yawn is something still that you have to contend with because it's going to force you to make a switch. Dragonite's a really lovely switch in here because it does have that stomping tantrum, <laughs> which is obviously a really big threat in this Glamora. Mm. However, obviously, um, you know, Inosh could play defensive. He can maybe tear out of it to try and live. But either way, if Alex does go for that stomping tantrum, it's going to set up the toxic debris. Mm -hmm. And and so that's a really nice um, synergy with the Yawn on Torkoal because you obviously you don't want to switch out too much to otherwise you get poisoned from the toxic debris. But you also want to switch if you've been yawned so you don't mm -hmm. get put to sleep. So <laughs> we've started to get that action now, especially if Eno starts to get up those yawns, which I've seen him try and do last mm -hmm. turn. Well, Alex building on the Snarl is going to be lowering the special attack once again of both Torkoal and Glamora are going to be sitting at minus two at this point in time. There's the Stomping Tantrum that you mentioned, going to connect on Glamora and get a solid knockout against it. But this does give Enosh the opportunity to now bring in a Pokemon from the back. The Toxic Debris has hit the field, as you mentioned, so that's something Alex also has to be a little bit more cautious of when switching Pokemon in. Of course, Dragonite using its Flying type isn't going to be affected by that, but Pokemon like the Arcanine are still going to be. And there's that Yawn connecting, so now Alex has a decision to make. He does, exactly. And now with the leftovers, Torkoal uh, healing up a little bit more. And she has a little bit of wiggle room to get in something a little bit more safely, knowing the Arcanine's probably going to be playing defensive next turn. So we can see him kind of considering Roaring Moon and Fluttermane here at the moment. And both of them are going to be taking a lot of damage from this Dragonite at the moment. Because this Dragonite obviously still has the ability to Terrastalize. Mm -hmm. And with a Terra Flying Terra Blast from a Dragonite, which has so much attack, is going to probably one-shot Fluttermane, even though it's not even super effective. Well, that's the thing. Fluttermane is, is frail, particularly on the defensive side of things, so you need to make sure that you're avoiding any of those physical attacks. Roaring Moon, however, is going to be the Pokemon choice for Enosh here. It is. So here it comes in. And Roaring Moon, as we saw, was played a big part in our round one mm -hmm. with those booster energy boosting its speed. But this time we have the boost in the attack, so a little bit more offensive here and a little bit more commonly of what we've been seeing in previous matches. Now, Roaring Moon does have the ability to reduce some damage with that breaking swipe that we do see. The jaw lock is something that's really cool mm -hmm. though because you're able to um, trap the opposing Pokemon in and that could be something that you want to combine again with your yawn. So I really like the way Enosh <laughs> has kind of created his team here. So we're mm -hmm. going to go into this turn now and see what this Arcanine is going to do about that drowsiness. I really like that call out about the jaw lock actually again kind of highlighting the synergy that Enosh has built into this team at this point in time. I want to see some terrestrialization, however, because I think at this, at this point in time, Alex has had to be doing a lot of switching, playing a little bit more defensively, and Anush has really been in the driving seat, being able to apply a lot of pressure, whether it's with some big offensive pressure or going for something like a Yawn. You can see Arcanine actually going, hey, I don't want to be put to sleep here. I maybe want to intimidate that Roaring Moon a little bit later on. So we'll be making the switch, and Iron Hands will join the field. You can see, of course, it is going to be poisoned straight away at this point in time and just have to take a little bit of residual damage. And there we go. We've got the first terror. Here it is, terrestrialization, looking like it's from, um, oh, it's from mm. Alex's end, and is that terror flying? So, massive amounts of damage is going to come out here. Life Orb, flying terror, and mm -hmm. that terror blast as well gives Dragonite a reliable flying move that it can use, which it often doesn't have before. But it's breaking swipe first from Enosh's Roaring Moon. Yeah, breaking swipe, swiping across the field, so going to be lowering the attack of both the Dragonite and the Iron Hand. So, where previously Alex has been lowering special attack on Enosh's side, he's able to retaliate with these breaking swipes. There's that Terror Blast, however, going to connect into Warrior Moon, do over 50% of damage, huge like amount chunked away at it at this point. And Torkoal sitting pretty on the field at this point, is you know just able to go for these yawns. And ultimately, Alex is kind of leaving it alone at this point, and this is where the issue now starts to work on Alex. You're going to end up with Pokemon falling asleep if you're not careful. Exactly, and Dragonite does have the ability to kind of switch out here at the moment, and Arcline is always a good switch in, yeah. especially versus into Roaring Moon, which is at the moment a physical attacker. Reduce the damage of those breaking swipes and jaw locks and keep your Pokemon around a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. Iron Hands is very physically bulky, so it's probably not going to worry too much, but I feel like that's probably the obvious switch in here. You don't have a lot to lose by just switching in the Arcline from mm -hmm. the Dragonite at the moment. Obviously, Arcline is going to get poisoned, but it has to come in at some point anyway, and you really don't want to have your Dragonite go to sleep, which is the one you've terrestrialized mm -hmm. and you're kind of banking on 
doing lots of damage. That's very true. And Alex, you know, the last three remaining Pokemon for Alex are all kind of physical attackers, um, generally speaking. Um, I mean, Arcanine, in, in this case, yeah, it's got Flare Blitz. It can still hit on the physical side. So you want to try and get rid of the Roaring Moon to stop those Breaking Swipes from b being played into action. The Intimidate, as you mentioned, is going to lower the attack of both Pokemon. It's only really effective against that Roaring Moon. And, you know, Torkoal going, I've put enough Pokemon to sleep. I've applied pressure. Let's jump onto the physical side. And Enosh bringing that Fluttermane back into the fray of things. And we're going to see the Terror on Enosh's side. So it is, of course, going to be that Roaring Moon that was still on the field. So we are going to see the Poison Terror type. This has been one that has really kind of picked up in the metagame, allowing you a lot of defensive capabilities. And I have to love, I always love the animation with the hats on these Pokemon. Exactly. And Roaring Moon wears it very well. <laughs> so it's heading up to the Root this time, mm -hmm. boosting its HP pretty much all the way back to full. Yep, love to see this on Roaring Moon, just getting back a lot of recovery. Fluttermane's going to have to take a little chunk of damage as Alex pilots in this Volt Switch, so it's going to be withdrawing the Iron Hands and bringing in the Pokemon from the back that we know is that Dragonite. So it's able to come back onto the field here. It's going to have its attack start reset from the Breaking Swipes that it took earlier, but it is going to be poisoned here. I like how oh, yeah. Iron Hands. I like how Iron Hands is being used, kind of as a really bulky kind of pivoty option. Mm -hmm. Kind of reminds me maybe a little bit of Incineroar from last year, actually, Lou. Mm. Um, that you're able to kind of have a pivoting option, but you're slow, which means whatever you're like trying to pivot in can come in safely after everything else is already attacked, mm -hmm. and that's perfect for something like this really offensive Dragonite with its flying Terra type. It, so it's not going to be able to take anything from the Roaring Moon or the Fluttermane that's just mm -hmm. come in. However, Roaring Moon and Fluttermane are both naturally faster than Dragonite at the moment, so are uh, very much threatening it mm -hmm. with its moves at the moment. It does have extreme speed, however, uh, which can obviously do a lot of damage, but it's not going to pick up any KOs right now. So mm -hmm. as we can see, Alex is going on the defensive here. Yes, and I think I got tongue-tied there. I was going to say it doesn't get poison because it's flying type, um, which is a nice advantage that Alex has here. Fluttermane going for the Dazzling Gleam, able to deal a significant chunk of damage to both the opposing Pokemon here, but not enough to get a KO against it. Arcanine's going to be able to eat its Citrus Berry as well, get a little bit of recovery, and I think now all eyes are on trying to remove this Roaring Moon from play. Breaking Swipe's going to come out as it is faster than the Pokemon on Alex's side, and it's going to be able to reduce the attack once again of Iron Hands and Arcanine, and the HP is dwindling down on Alex side of the field. Arcanine following up with the Flare Blitz, however, going to be able to do a significant chunk to Fluttermane, but will obviously take some recoil as well, and this is where that poison is really coming into play. Enoch really just needs to play defensively at this point, and Alex's Pokemon, the two on the field at least, are going to be able to KO themselves in a matter of turns anyway. I mean, Iron Hands is already gone. Yeah, Iron Hands goes straight down to the poison. So now Dragonite has to come in for Alex now mm -hmm. at the moment for his last final two. But you're really seeing actually how Enosh has really set up this game really well with his Torkoal, Glamour, with Poison, and mm -hmm. forcing the switches to get him into this good position with his two really fast Paradox Pokemon, and having given Alex no opportunity for his own kind of speed control. So at the moment, we, yes, he has the extreme speed, but that's obviously not going to affect the Fluttermane here. Mm -hmm. It does affect the Roaring Moon, but it might not be enough of a KO because it's, it's a Paradox Pokemon, it has a lot of bulk in general. So we may not see that yet. But so it's going to be on Enosh to probably head off that Dazzling Gleam and see how much damage it really does with that Choice Specs. Yeah, no, I agree. The Choice Specs are a really nice choice on the... F <laughs> that was not intended as a pun there at all. Fluttermane, because you not only get that nice spread damage, and particularly as we've already commented, Alex's Pokemon are weaker in terms of their HP bar at this moment. You can see the forfeit just locked in. Alex knows the riding's on the war, and we're going to be able to see a Game 2 with Enosh taking Game 1. Yeah, uh, and a really cool way to see Enosh is piloting his team there. Because mm -hmm. um, Glamour is not something that we see a lot of, but it's such a really cool Pokemon. Yeah. We only have Nihiligo as another Poison <laughs> and uh, Rock type, mm -hmm. but Glamour does a very different job with that Assault Vest and that Toxic Debris, mm -hmm. you want it to take those hits. So being Assault Vest means you could be a bit more bulky, yes. because you can take more hits, you're more likely to get those two layers of Toxic Debris, which then badly poisons the opponent instead of just the normal. Mm -hmm. And that forces any Pokemon that might want to stall, let's say Dondozo, for <laughs> instance, um, like really gives them on a timer and mm -hmm. doesn't give any opportunity for them to heal up. Garganackle, too, another good example. I mean, also, Glamora does one thing that I think Nihiligo could only dream of, which is be able to transform into any type you want. You know, those four times weak to ground, I can just become a flying type and avoid all of those horrible earth powers or earthquakes coming my way. And I think that's one of the cool flexibility niches that you get from terror typing as well, that you're able to kind of have defensive capabilities, moves that you normally would be really, you know, weak to, you're then able to actually be resisted to. Taking a look into game two, do we think we're going to see any Palafin? Both trainers didn't opt to bring it in this particular match, but do you think maybe game two, it, it's kind of a high risk, high reward strategy? 
I think for Alex, um, I don't think he's going to bring the power up in. I mm -hmm. think that Torkoal is too much of an easy option for Enosh to bring um, because it boosts, it supports his other Pokemon. It's not something that he's he's brought to kind of counter something specific from Alex. Mm -hmm. So I think it's more on Enosh who might bring his Palafin if he chooses to leave his Torkoal behind. But I don't think well, there's any world where Alex is going to bring him. Mm -hmm. I could be definitely wrong. <laughs> um, I'm not these players. I'm here. They're there. Um, <laughs> but... Um, it could be on Erich to kind of maybe switch something up. Now he has the momentum. He can try something a little bit different, mm. something that Alex has not seen yet. So in game two, he can have that kind of a little bit more element of surprise of how he can play something. So particularly that Dragonite of his own, because with that Ice Spinner, it's pretty good into the opposing Dragonite too. Mm -hmm. And with also having that Terra Blast, it hits just very hard into the Iron Hands. Well, Torkoal's the one causing trouble, isn't it? Because if you take a look at Alex's side as well, there really isn't a lot of utility to deal with it. You mentioned earlier, you know, the stomping tantrum on the Dragonite, which is great. But if you lose that Dragonite, you don't really have a way to deal with this Torkoal for super effective damage. It makes me really miss um, Pelipper around about now because I think Alex could benefit from at least having the Pelipper in the back. So when Torkoal comes out front, the sun's in the sky, you can override that. And not only does that weaken, you know, the offensive pressure that Torkoal can deal out with something like the Flamethrower, for example, you then will be able to deal huge damage with any water type move, whether it's from a Pelipper or a Palafin. But there is no Pelipper to be here, but we do have some mice on the field. It's going to be Mousehole paired up with the Arcanine and an adjustment as well from Enosh. It's going to be Glamora out front this time, but still paired up with that wonderful Torkoal. Yeah, so we see Enosh's lead with that classic kind of, let's get Toxic Debris early, yeah. let's start getting those yawns, let's get you sp switching out and everything. Uh, whereas on Alex's end, he, I like the switch up with the mouse hold there, because you here we've got Super Fang as an option, which mm -hmm. is not too common. We often see maybe Population Bomb or Beat Up to kind of combine with someone's Annihilate, but here it's the Super Fang. So you could do suddenly 50% to something, and versus the Torkoal, which was such a problem last time, that could be really huge for whatever it might be in the back. And also Alex is kind of led with two Pokemon that don't mind kind of going down after you've kind of set something up like get up a snarl then just kind of switch out which makes the switch safer mm -hmm. or even if you go down it gives you the opportunity to s maybe set up with something like the gold dengo because especially versus the Torkoal, as you s say lou mm -hmm. palafin doesn't really want to come it come in because of the, the sun's up but it's the only super effective option so the other way is kind of dealing with Torkoal's lower special defense and that gold dengo with shadow ball could do a lot of damage and here it comes yeah arcanine going i'm going to save my intimidate for later when a physical attack is on the field and just jumps out golden go joins the fray and i like the way mousehood is protecting here you want to keep that friend guard ability active for as long as possible glamora going from mortal spin its signature move here is going to be able to connect onto um well not obviously the golden go it's steel type but it's a nice poison type move that would be able to inflict damage and also poison the opposing pokemon if there are any entry hazards as well or like you know leech seeds in play it would get rid of those as well golden go does take a significant chunk of damage for its troubles though really nice call by enosh here predicting that the arcanine was going to leave and golden go was going to come in so targeting correctly there a nice offensive play yeah that's a really huge flamethrower there like <laughs> it suddenly just puts that goldengo in a really awkward spot because we saw from game one that the glamora outspeeds the goldengo and just mm. ko'd it with an earth power so it's on alex now if he wants to terrestrialize into the water type for instance to maybe live the earth power mm -hmm and then get something off. But then you, you are committing your trastalization to just getting one attack off probably. And Alex may not find that worth it. But it depends on what he else is he's got in the back and how much he has to deal with this tall coal. But here comes a little bit of support though. Follow mm -hmm. me from the mouse hold. Love to see this drawing in all the attacks to protect Golden Go. Glamora is going to go for the sludge bomb into the little mice. Does about a third of damage as Golden Go utilizes the support opportunity to go for a nasty plot. It's going to boost up its special attack by two stages. And that is something that Enosh has to watch out for. Flamethrower is going to be followed up but it's not enough to get the KO against that mousehold. So mousehold now in a position where it could go for a protect again, just keep friend guard in play and keep itself on the field and allow the golden go to make it rain all day long. That's a massive survival on the mousehold because now you can follow me any of those annoying attacks for Glamour at the moment mm -hmm. and then you can do a, probably a safe trastalization into the water type for Golden Goat and to save yourself from the subsequent flamethrower mm -hmm. and dish out a huge amount of damage. As you say, make it rain, we'll <laughs> dish out huge amounts of the Torkoal and Shadow Ball will probably one shot. So uh, let's see what happens this turn. Oh, it's just going to be a double protect. I think Alex may be scouting out what Enosh wanted to do in this turn. And you can see, you know, three protects, actually. It's kind of maybe all eyes on the Glamora. It, it, we're not going to see a fourth one, though, because we know Torkoal is slower. Glamora was actually going for that mortal spin. So just trying to, you know, maybe get some poison down onto that opposing mouse hold and just chip away at it a little bit more. Or maybe if there was a switch to catch a Pokemon here. But now going into this next turn, we know those protects have been burnt. Exactly. So I, I like the, the call from Alex there. 
predicted the more defensive play from Enosh mm -hmm. and particularly that protect on Torkoal, which is probably exactly what Alex mm -hmm. was wanting now. Because now a Shadow Ball into that slot looks completely unresisted unless a Roaring Moon switches in at that point, and which st would still take a huge amount of damage from Goldanger, which has a really big special attack stat, mm -hmm. and it's at plus two with that, thanks to that nasty plot. Now we're going to see Mousehold be able to pull off one more move it's probably going to be that follow me but to make it rain it's also going to do a, a big chunk of damage here but i would like to see that shadow ball into the talker for alex because mm -hmm. talker was such an issue last game it definitely was and you know let's go for the super fang take down 50 percent so you can guarantee a ko but you're going to see the glamora go first it doesn't get the knockout Ooh. on golden go though alex still in here to go for that shadow ball that you said you wanted to see it's going to be able to connect down onto that opposing talker and remove it from the field Oh, I saw that Earth Barrage, <laughs> the, like the Goldengo. I was like, no, no. it's going to go down. <laughs> and then, like, Alec, Alec comes, Goldengo's bulk mm -hmm. really shining through there. Alex knows the way these Pokemon are trained. We've got open team sheets, obviously, but mm -hmm. both boats cannot see the stats of either Pokemon. So they don't know how bulky they are, mm -hmm. how speedy they are. So that was probably a KO Enosh was really mm -hmm. expecting. And absolutely, that did not happen. And the really key Pokemon in Torgal has now gone down. Mm -hmm. So no more yawns for the field at the moment. You've got to credit the little mice, too, as well. Mousehole with that friend guard ability boosting up the defenses but I think you know it definitely was a team effort there you know the training that has probably gone into that golden go paired up with the mice just allowed it to survive now if you're Enos you've got a difficult decision to make who are you going to bring in the Rory Moan or the Fluttermane I would say the Fluttermane mm -hmm. um, because you obviously do a lot of speed you can Obviously, the follow me can come out first, and that mm -hmm. can dish away any sort of dazzling gleams. But um, sorry, any shadow balls. Mm -hmm. But you have then have the dazzling gleam. Pardon yes. me, <laughs> uh, so that you can then probably get the KO here. Looking at those that health, no sort of speed control at the moment. Same with game one. Actually, Alex didn't have really had any sort of speed control, and th that's something that his team lacks at the moment, and more relying on that kind of bulk. Mm -hmm. But here we come for a protect for the uh, mouse holder. Yeah, and to be honest, a choice specs. Dazzling Gleam, I think, would be able to get the knockout on both the opposing Pokemon, so wise for a mouse hold to protect here, but it might be a bit more difficult for Golden Go to be able to survive this, even though it's not very effective. That is a Fluttermane. It is carrying choice specs. It's still going to be able to hit really hard, but I think Golden Go's been able to do its job here, and it does allow Alex the utility to bring in a Pokemon from the back. Now, we know that Arcanine is there, but I feel like Arcanine isn't the Pokemon of choice at this point. You have too much pressure coming off from something like the Glamora. Um, it's possibly going to be one of, the, one of the physical attackers in the back. I'd say so, and, mm -hmm. and yes, good call, Luke. Here comes the Dragonite. So um, with at full HP, with a mm -hmm. live orb, and the inner focus, and <laughs> still with the ability to terrestrialize, no mm -hmm. doubt, um, it's still going to be able to dish out a lot of damage. And that is probably going to be be able to KO either of these Pokemon um, just with one turn at the moment, either with that Terra Blast or the Stomping Chances into the Glamora. However, Enosh also hasn't terrestrialized yet, so uh, both <laughs> these players are still having to think quite a lot about uh, all the different options, because uh, after that terrestrialization, mm -hmm. suddenly that's one thing that your opponent cannot do. Mm -hmm. So kind of like what we saw with Dynamax last year, later you leave it, still the more guessing games your opponent <laughs> has to do. Yeah, that's very true, and it still allows you then the flexibility later on as well that you might need. Mousehold going to be removed from the field, going to be safe for later to support another day, and we're of course going to see the Arcanine join the field. So it's throwing down the Intimidate to no avail, but I think the key thing here is it can apply pressure with something like Snarl going into the next couple of turns. Arcanines do tend to be built kind of bulky. This one's also got the Citrus Berry in its back pocket in case it needs it, so then it can support that Dragonite a little bit more. But we are going to see a Terrestrialization. It's going to be that Dragonite going into Terra Flying type. It, of course, has to watch out for any potential... Um, rock type moves like a power gem coming out from the Glamora here, but if it's able to get a critical knockout with something like the Stomping Tantrum into Glamora, then it doesn't have to worry about those at all. But we're going to see a Terra apiece. Yes, yeah, so let's see if someone has really kind of called at the moment. So, oh no, it's so oh. I thought it might have been the Steel Terror on the Fluttermane to kind of take the Terror flying, but it's, mm. it's the Water type on the Glamora, so it looks like Enosh is trying to call the Stomping Tantrum from this Dragonite. Yes, and we're going to see the Dazzling Gleam go first of all from the Fluttermane, do a huge chunk of damage to that Dragonite, despite the fact it's dropped its Dragon typing. Dragonite is going to go for that Terror Blast, it's going to be the speedier out of it and Glamora, and that Terror Blast is going to be able oh. to do a huge chunk of damage, but it doesn't get the knockout. You see Enosh celebrating that fact because now Glamora not only throws toxic debris onto the field but has the utility to try and go for a move in this turn it outspeeds the arcanines obviously join the field it's going to go for the power gem get the knockout as retaliation for that terror blast amazing play by enosh here amazing indeed exactly i think alex going for that terror blast there obviously either called the glamour to switch or mm. to terrestrialize um knowing that enosh didn't want his glamour to go down to just the stomping tantrum but it ends up being a 
quite bulky enough that it's actually able to take that really big hit instead anyway. So it ended up being like the absolutely perfect play for Enosh there. Mm -hmm. And Fluttermane gets completely away with dishing out a dish decent amount of damage too. And because it naturally outspeeds Mousehold too, um, it's looking like it's, it's very much in Enosh's favor here. Yeah, definitely. Mousehold just going to protect and stay on the field for a little bit longer. But it's going to be really difficult for this fire type in the form of the Arcanine to deal damage at this point in play. You know, you've got a water type Glamour on the field as well. And there's, first of all, a Dazzling Gleam coming out. That would have got the KO on Mousehold if it hadn't protect. Just chips away at the Arcanine a little bit more. It's able to go for the Flare Blitz. Oh, I forget how low the HP was on that Glamour. It does get the knockout, a little bit of revenge for the Dragonite. But obviously, it's going to have to take a little bit of recoil as well. Enosh as well has the Roaring Moon in the back. We've already seen that. And then suddenly you're in this situation where the Flutter Main can just go for that Dazzling Gleam again. We see how speedy it is. It's going to be able to remove that Mouse Hold from play. And then it is a 2v1 down against that Arcanine. Arcanine is healing up with that little Citrus Berry right now. And Arcanine is the key here for Alex because mm -hmm. on the Mouse Hold, all it's got is Super Fang. And in fact, actually, because oh, I couldn't really see the gone. poison, it is gone. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's all on Arcanine here from Generation 1, still sticking mm. it out in 2023. <laughs> but And fresh new Roaring Moon it does come in, actually, however. So um, it's looking like uh, quite a lot for Alex's Arcanine to do here at the moment. It's a bit of the battle of the ages, like you said, the veteran of BGC history, Arcanine on the field versus two new faces to the metagame. And you can see Alex locking in the forfeit. The game is Enosh's, and he takes round two in a 2 and 0 set. Congratulations to Enoch as well. It really convincingly too. Mm -hmm. Kind of looking at both those teams, it really seemed like he had a kind of decent matchup as well there. He, he was able to just kind of go quite safely with both of his bulky poke on that Torkoal and that Fluttermane, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, and the Glamora. Yeah. Really kind of set up and just then get safely in with his Fluttermane. And Roaring Moon didn't even need to do much at all. It was really that offensive pressure that kind of Fluttermane was able to do. And we've seen a lot of players really have to adapt to, to Fluttermane because of that and its speed. And I think the, the lack of speed control that Alex was able to get off mm -hmm. was probably quite key in Enosh being able to just do what he wanted with that Fluttermane. Yeah, I completely agree again. It's why I miss Pelipo, because Pelipo can always go for something like a Tailwind and get the speed up on the opposing, on your side of the field. One thing I have to credit, though, just talking about weather, is Enosh's Torkoal. You know, not a Pokemon I was expecting to be so dominant in the meta, particularly after a Palafin win. That's a bit of a tongue twister and a half. Um, but the one thing that's really nice about it as well is, obviously, like you mentioned earlier, it will activate that protosynthesis ability on Pokemon like Roaring Moon and on Fluttermane. And if you don't have the sun in the sky, you can activate that with a booster energy. But the fact that both those Pokemon don't need it means they're free to go for some, I would say, maybe better item choices to allow them more flexibility. The choice specs on Fluttermane in particular was very strong. It was, and it was able to get huge KOs, and you can go for like a resisted move and still know you're going to pick up something like yeah. that, Goldengo at the end. Mm -hmm. And what I also really like about the Torkoal too is that I think a lot of players, initially early on, were maybe not thinking they didn't want to go for Torkoal because mm -hmm. rain seems so strong. Mm -hmm. Oh, Torkoal's not going to do much damage to that. But what if you actually use Torkoal as that supportive piece instead mm -hmm. of dishing out that damage? Use it to help your Paradox Pokemon and use Torkoal for other things like that Yawn mm -hmm. and to be able to take all those and sponge those attacks up. I think it's a really great medical because we've also seen a rise in Terra Steel types. You know, they've been rising on Pokemon like Dondozo. I mean, we saw it very early on in Series 1 on like Hydreigon, for example. But then Dondozo's got one, Fluttermane's got one, even a Gastrodon have one in Liverpool. And it's the kind of thing where, you know, this Steel type Terra has been so dominant, having a Pokemon that can hit it with a Fire type move is really nice in terms of flexibility. And Torkoal, even though it is a little bit more supportive, it still has that flamethrower, so it can still do its part in the match as well. And both players had Dragonites too, which is really <laughs> yes. cool. And obviously we saw Gavin use a Dragonite to really good mm -hmm. success in OCIC. So I'm not surprised it's kind of picked up a little bit here. It's obviously a really bulky option. It's got a lot of attack. And it seems to have like any sort of type of po like move that you could e possibly mm -hmm. want. So you're able to dish out damage to exactly what you want. Obviously so something it needs is that support for, with the speed, um, mm -hmm. which uh, unfortunately Alex wasn't able to get up and be able to then deal with that flutter main. But there was that key turn though, where we saw that ter terror flying yes. into the Glamora. Mm -hmm. If that had just been the Fluttermane, we would have looked at a really different game too. So great play by Enosh. Really. Again, Dragonite's gone on its own little adventure, hasn't it? We're now seeing a lot of terror flying, when at the beginning it was terror normal, extreme speed, choice ban, big damage. But with the rise of ghost types like Fluttermane and obviously Golden Go, it, it kind of has dropped off a little bit. It has. But however, um, that is round two of Bokken mm -hmm. Regionals at the moment. Uh, congrats to Ino Shaha for the win. He is now 2-0, mm -hmm. so probably feeling pretty good. You're confident. Yeah. Exactly. Why wouldn't you? And especially versus Alex Gomez. Oh, yeah. It's how you want to start your day. You know, with a 2-0 record, it sets a good precedent for the rest of the day. It really does. And, like, gives you a little bit of time. Maybe you have a <laughs> bit of a break as well. Don't have to do that third game. Anyway, we're going to try and get Ino for mm -hmm. an interview soon. So we're going to take a really quick break, and we will be back very shortly.
Welcome back, everybody. We are here with the winner of round two stream match, Enosh Shahar. And wow, what a way to start the day. Yeah, uh, this was my first set of the tournament, which is pretty terrifying because uh, my round one opponent, uh, unfortunately, they got sick a few days earlier. Yeah, so when everyone else was playing and getting warmed up, I was folding my team sheet so I could carry with it, carry it with me the rest of the day. So uh, I started off with the Pokey Wrath uh, in uh, Liverpool round one, the winner of the London Open, and now I pulled Alex Gomez. So I pulled back to back two of the strongest players from Spain, and that's really scary. I mean, it's not an easy feat at all. Um, uh, we definitely take those with any unintentional round one buys. <laughs> but I think being able to go up against the caliber of player of which Alex is, you, you are yourself as well, but being able to go up, I, I believe you've mentioned uh, you're close friends with Alex as well. I've loved Alex since like 2010, 2011, just absolutely adore him. Uh, like uh, when he was in seniors, I was rooting for him. I was so happy when he got top eight of Worlds in 2011. Uh, 2012, uh, I was like rooting for all the seniors that year. Then when he went to Masters, and uh, him and Gavin both were just kicking, ki kicking ass, honestly. Yeah, uh, and uh, they were just incredible. And uh, him and uh, him and Gavin. And now seeing that Gavin just wins OCIC, and I kind of like associate the two of them as like some of the greatest ever from the same year. I'm just like, oh man. If Gavin wins OCIC, does that mean Alex has to win this? <laughs> I mean, that's a very fair thought. <laughs> but of course, we did see you go up against Alex um, in what was a very interesting match, to say the least. Um, a couple of key highlights to call out. I, I think um, quite a few, actually, <laughs> if I'm completely honest. Uh, like, the turn one game two was honestly the game-winning play. Uh, when I got the flamethrower off against the Goldengo, I really needed to go and get damage into Goldengo. In game one, that also came up where it was snarled and I got to the flamethrower. Then I got the burn, which uh, luckily Earth Power still got the KO, but I don't yeah. know for sure the rules there. Right it made me feel more comfortable. Like slot, right? Yeah. And uh, then uh, when Goldengo survived uh, on uh, game two, I was like, oh man, I should have clicked helping hand. <laughs> uh, just all of those things, terrifying. But really what uh, made me feel good about the matchup mm -hmm. was I had a choice back Splutter main and the Dragonite didn't have protect. Yeah. So I could click my damage move and try to get as much as I can. Yeah. And I had to be aware of what he could Terra, when he could Terra. Will he be able to Terra the Goldengo? If he does, yeah. how do I play around the back? And I think with um, the interaction, of course, you just mentioned the choice specs, Flutter Main, you've got that Sun yeah. Protosynthesis mode and special attack, a boost as well. It's essentially equivalent to maybe a Life Orb, about I think. A life orb. About a Life Orb or so? Life Orb and, uh, <laughs> life orb and Choice specs together, yeah. they end up being, actually, with Protosynthesis, it ends up being making it exactly two times stronger. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, so it's a free Terra type. Uh, pretty yeah. much. It's like, what if I, it's, yeah, it's insane. So I go and have my calcs and I'm like, what if I do double the damage? What if everything is super effective? <laughs> what if I just keep on stacking all of the different multipliers? Like we, we could do that, right? I, I also have helping hand on the Torkoal. So <laughs> yeah, uh, that's very fun. And uh, honestly, like uh, I've, it lets me go and invest more in defensiveness on a lot of my Pokemon, like the Roaring Moon and uh, the Fluttermain. Both deal so much damage that I now have the luxury, which it really is a luxury, to go and put uh, things into bulk. And my whole team was, I'm really comfortable with bulk, playing slow. Uh, like when I, And Alex's team was very offensive. The Life Orb Dragonite, when I was like, okay, please be Stalin Tantrum. Then I saw Terra Blast. I was like, please don't KO. And I was like... I was like, Glamour has a lot of stats, it should survive. But then I was like, so does Dragonite. It does. It is a bit of a pseudo-legendary, and we know that they are uh, blessed with very good stats as well and bold, right? And even offensive presence, which, you know, we've seen. Roaring move, uh, Rune, obviously, a, um, a past-type variant of present-day Salamence, right? And just really putting in the work. But something I did very want to quickly point out, uh, your Lamora, right? We, we briefly spoke about it. Assault Vest, but also Mortal Spin, its signature move. 
So I saw Al Aaron Trailer and Yuki team from OCIC. I was like, Mortal Spin is so cool. <laughs> and I, I was trying like energy ball and different moves before. Yeah. And then I said, wait, I can just poison everything when I don't actually do that much. And it turns out poison does a lot. Like it, it stacks was, up, right? <laughs> it it was taking down the, the Iron Hands, it was taking down the Arcanine. And honestly without the poison, yep. no shot. And I mean, it makes a lot of sense if you think about it, because obviously Glamora is very good in its special attackive presence, right? And being able to have toxic debris, maybe switch in or sort of redirect attention towards that slot is quite nice. But then you've got the manual way of trying to say, right, let me try to actually get something going, get some damage uh, ticking at the end of each turn. Yeah, the combination of uh, the Mortal Spin and Beyond and the Toxic Debris ends up really meaning that, okay, you have a Pokemon that is immune to one status, but are you immune to all of the status? <laughs> well, exactly that. And I mean, we saw how much it paid dividends like throughout the set, of course. Um, we did mention, so game one, it was quite crucial in order to get a Flamethrower attack onto, I believe, the Golden Go. You did pick up a burn, so it did stack up a bit of some damage over time, right? Yeah, and uh, honestly, Goldengo, from what I could tell, is pretty defensive too, uh, defensively trained uh, on Alex's end. So I was like, okay, I'm at minus one. What if I go? What happens if I go to minus two? What am I supposed to do? Do I go for a helping hand? Do I go for Yawn? How do I play around this? Because while his Dragonite doesn't have protect, while his uh, Iron Hands doesn't have protect because of holding the Assault Vest, Choice Specs uh, Fluttermane mean, also doesn't have protect, and neither does Glamora. So it turns out we both were just playing on a knife's edge for a lot of the game and a lot of the set, and we had to go make the small advantages build up to something that would end the game. Exactly, and I think it, when it comes to these sort of uh, teams and the matchups, right, very offensive, very high octane sort of yeah. presence, you need to, uh, even the slightest of mistakes can just lose you the game instantly just because of what stakes are on the field. And um, being able to see that unfold was fascinating in game one, but something I really want to highlight is game two, turn one. Oh. Talk to us about that flamethrower into the Arcanine slot, only to find a Golden Go. So that was the turn that I was probably most excited and most proud of for myself that entire set. Yeah. Uh, so against a mousehold Arcanine, I see that. I'm like, it's defensive. He could try to slow me down. But Arcanine doesn't do anything into either Pokemon. I can click Snarl. But uh, to go take a poison, to go and take uh, uh, maybe a power gem so early on, yeah. that's something you want to avoid. And uh, what I knew from uh, Alex's team there's probably either an Iron Hands, mm -hmm. a Dragonite, yep. or a Goldango in the back. If I get the Poison on Iron Hands or Dragonite right then and there, I'm very happy. If I get the Flamethrower into uh, the Goldango, I'm ecstatic. <laughs> It did turn out to be the case, and all of a sudden, you have a Pokemon uh, well-known for its offensive presence, and, of course, the immunity of any sort of like, status-type moves going into that slot. All of a sudden, at the back foot, you know, just uh, within the range of just being KO'd, and so much momentum has been lost from the get-go in Game 2 when you're already a game behind if you're Alex. I'm pretty sure if I didn't get that, Alex would have been able to set up Nasty Plot mm. pretty much for free. And a lot of that uh, read for game two really was, I don't think he's going the Goldengo Mousehold as a lead, yeah. at least not right off the bat. And if he does, I will try my best to just KO the Mousehold and hope that it goes from there. Yeah. And, I mean, from there on, essentially, yeah. that's kind of what happened, right? Uh, we yeah. saw that you were able to just out-resource Alex in that situation where uh, you're able to whittle him down to his final two Pokemon, and it's just... You had no more gas in the tank from Alex's perspective, and you could just go ahead and feel a bit more safe with your plays going into it. Yeah, like honestly, one of the things that brought me the most relief in this set was against Arcanine Roaring Moon. Yeah. Given that I have a Breaking Swipe and a Roost in a 1v1 situation, I will win that. And uh, that meant that I'm focusing on everything else, and uh, Alex needed to focus on the Torkoal threat, uh, on the Glamour threat, on the Fluttermane threat, and the Roaring Moon threat, whereas I had to, to focus on the Goldango and the Goldango and the Dragonite. Yeah, so and I it was about yeah, so I had a little bit more room to maneuver, yeah. but it was still like he has really strong support Pokemon. Yeah. It's really hard. Yeah. 
So essentially what we're saying is uh, you had lesser crucial targets to ensure that you meet your win con uh, situations, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think being able to see this, of course, was such a delight. We've already had some cracker of two matches for our stream, round one and round two. So generally speaking, how are your feelings and thoughts going into this? Feeling really good, of course. You are now 2-0. Going into round three, still a lot of rounds to go through, of course, but it must feel really good so far. Uh, yes, like my whole testing was ups and downs. I knew what I liked and I was like, I really have been playing well with Dragonite. I'm going to use Dragonite. Fluttermane, it's Mr. Viss. I uh, love Mr. Viss, so I get to use uh, an even more powerful one. That makes me very happy. Glamora, after I got to like that shiny Glamora, the rampaging, I was like, I want to use this. And it also, Glamora was just so well situated, and I really enjoyed it. After seeing it on Emilio's team, then after seeing it on Aaron's team, I wanted to be able to bring Glamora with my own spin, and I was a mortal spin. <laughs> yes, my own mortal spin, <laughs> and hopefully it'll be a, a make me immortalized. Uh, and then I was trying hard trick room with Torkoal for the longest time, and I'm really bummed that I couldn't fit eruption on Torkoal, yeah. but this is what worked out. I got some inspiration from. I think it was uh, Bingji, actually. Uh, he was using a pretty aggressive uh, team with uh, Drought Torkoal with uh, pretty much this moveset. He also managed to fit Tyranitar, and uh, I can't give him Dragonite uh, and Multiscale, but he managed to fit that, and I was like, this is, looks so cool. And I think, like you said, Tyranitar, it'd be a bit too uh, counterproductive, uh, let's say, in the circumstances of how you've gone ahead and actually uh, configured your team. Um, so I would say very quickly as well, um, of course, you are 2-0. It's all great. Are you excited about the current format? I mean, you're here right now. You're playing really well. It looks like you're on form. Uh, is this really such a great format to come straight into? Series 2 was the most stressful event that I've played it since uh, looking at 2018. I could not even bring myself to play 2018 because of how stressed that made me. And just, I brought myself over to show up to here because I was feeling good in my practice. But this format had absolutely terrified me. Uh, There's so many scary teams and archetypes, like from the Mousehold to Goldengo yeah. setup to now Mousehold Annihilate to Don Dozo to uh, Fluttermane, to Rain, and all of those things just are so scary. Yeah. Uh, hard Trick Room with the uh, Ndidi Armors, and it's like, all these have such high usage, they're all really good, and every time I try to beat something, I lose to something else, and I just feel so lost. But the formats, the Pokemon's fun, Terrasalizing <laughs> is so much fun. I'm uh, kind of hoping for Series 3 to add even more chaos, and hopefully that will uh, let me break through the chaos. Oh, a bit of a chaotic <laughs> trainer over here from the scenes of like, uh, I think I prefer chaotic neutral with my building uh, overall. Naturally. Or maybe it goes uh, a little bit into chaotic evil. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the I like being able to take the pieces in the format when it has this chaos and try to identify tweaks that pan out. Like, shout-outs to uh, all my friends that did excellent at uh, OCIC, Gavin, Tub Nation, all of them. I was very happy that they managed to take the bulky our main idea and to take that so far and that made me very happy and very proud for them and i wish them the best of luck at knoxville in like what five hours yeah I'll give or take yeah actually insane so yeah good luck for everyone going to knoxville <laughs> <laughs> Maybe have a bit of a taste of what you're seeing here in Bochum, of course. So um, going into this then, uh, right now, 2-0, do you have any other uh, shout-outs? Uh, maybe uh, people that assisted you with team building, uh, of course, in the process. Quite an interesting team. Uh, you did mention you did get some influences from Aaron Trailer, uh, at least with the Glamora. Uh, uh, there's a lot of people that I could <laughs> shout-out to. Uh, like, thank you for everyone who is making this experience and who's kept me playing uh, this game for more than a decade uh, yeah. and uh, just it was really meaningful to go and just watch OCIC watch people do well uh, there are a lot of uh, people in my uh, life that I've known that I wish uh, could uh, watch that unfortunately like I've lost over the past year but uh, this uh, really makes me glad and I kind of wish I could I kind of want to go dedicate my play to doing something for all of them and to, for everyone that I've 
been like blessed enough to be touched by over the whole time in my community and that I've gotten to know so far. You have extremely warmed my heart <laughs> because that is such a lovely, sweet thing to say. And um, this is the sort of stuff that we're talking about where we just want to be able to enjoy the game together but also bring a bit of ourselves as well. You know, we devote a lot of time, uh, a lot of resources into a passion that we all share, we all love, and we just want to do the best that we can and not even that really we just want to enjoy the game just have fun because that yeah. in its essence is what we're doing and it's all about absolutely like uh the fun of the game the community and just the people and honestly pokemon has just brought me so close to so many people and like over the summer i went to alexander hill's wedding the fact that we're going to weddings now people that uh, like i've known for so long through pokemon that's insane to me and that's something that makes me really happy and now like i'll see we look around we go see bill and mary and it's like i knew you more than a decade ago all of us have grown up uh, with the game with each other with these friends and honestly the friendships that we've made along the way has been like so important so meaningful which is pretty sad to beat a mouse hold because <laughs> friend guard <laughs> Poor Mousehold, unfortunately, being a bit of a victim in that uh, set, of course. But, um, right, I mean, going uh, from this then, uh, we thank you very much from the bottom of our hearts for that beautiful set, as well as the lovely kind words as well. We'll be going to cut to a short break where we will be then resuming with round three. Your winner of round two, Enos, uh, Enosh Shaha. I'm still trying with the pronunciation, as you can tell. <laughs> but yes, don't go anywhere. I will be right back.